Acts 16, 31. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Salvation by faith. What does it mean that if you believe in Jesus, you are saved? What does it mean to be saved by faith? Salvation by forgiveness. Kapatawaran, kaligtasan sa pamamagitan ng pagpapatawad. Panginoon, salamat dahil kayo mapagpatawad. At ngayon umihingi kami ng kalinawagan. Malinawan sa aming isip ang malalim, mataas, matayog, malawak na kahulugan ng salvation by faith. We ask you to be our speaker. Enlighten us. Empower us to obey you. In the name of Jesus, your Son, our Lord, our Savior, our friend, we pray with gratitude. Salvation by forgiveness. To be forgiven by God means to be saved from the punishment for sin. So we cannot pay for our sin. We only need to be forgiven. And to be forgiven by God, it is very clear that it means forgive others. That's the deal. You want to be saved from the punishment for sin? You want salvation? You want to be forgiven? Forgive others. Matthew 6.14 For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. So instead of just praying to be forgiven, do the more active, the more proactive thing, forgive. When you forgive people, you automatically get forgiven, with or without you asking. asking. But if you do not forgive people, kahit pa ulit-ulit ka magdasal na patawarin ka, it doesn't work. Matthew 6.15 but if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Dito pa lang napakalinaw ng teaching ni Jesus. You want to be forgiven? You want to be saved from the punishment of sin? Forgive other people. Don't forgive and automatically you don't get forgiven. Marami mga tao madadasalin, dasal ng dasal ng patawarin sila ng Diyos, pero hindi sila nagpapatawad sa kapwa. Walang effect ang dasal na yun. Sayang lang ang salita. To be forgiven also means you forgive yourself. Mark 12, 31, love your neighbor as yourself. So hindi tayo binagbabawalang mahalin ang ating sarili. Ang sinasabi lang, huwag mo kakalimutan ng kapwa mo, mahalin mo rin tulad ng pagmamahal mo sa sarili mo, which goes without saying na, yes, mahalin mo ang sarili mo. Huwag lang sarili mo, mahalin mo rin ang kapwa tulad ng pag pa pagmamahal mo sa, kap sa iyong sarili. So ganun din, patawarin mo rin ang sarili mo tulad ng pagpapatawad mo sa iba. To really enjoy the blessings of God's forgiveness, apply it also to yourself. Maraming taong relihiyoso, yes, mapagpatawad, yes, maibigin, pero ang higpit-higpit sa sarili, galit sa sarili, hindi pinapatawad ang sarili. So hindi mo rin na-enjoy yung kapayapaan na dulot ng kaligtasan. Forgiving others and yourself unburdens you of anger, of bitterness, of isolation because of such anger. It also unburdens you of loneliness. Maraming mga tao malungkot kasi galit. Kasi maraming kagalit. At pag may mga kagalit ka, hindi mo pinapatawad, may pader sa pagitan nyo, naghihiwalay ka sa kanila. Forgiving unburdens you of the cycles of negative energy, of negative thought and negative act, which will color your world. In other words, forgiving unburdens you of the salve and gives you salvation from hell on earth. When you do not forgive, you live on hell, in hell, on earth. Kasi kung galit ka, nagtaramdam, nagtatampo, namumuhi, namupuot, lumilika ka na impyerno sa iyong paligid. Kaya ang gusto ng Panginoon, magpatawad ka. Hindi para ka malugi. Hindi para ka ipadehado. Kundi panalo ka pag nagpatawad ka. Kasi ikaw ang number one beneficiary pag nagpatawad ka. 
Ikaw ang number one lugi pag di ka nagpapatawad. Ephesians 4.31 Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. And this will lead to your health. Physical, mental, emotional, spiritual health. Pag binaligtad mo yan, at pinayagan mo na magtira sa puso mo, mga galit, hinanakit, sama ng loob, ang tanda-tanda ng problema, binubuhay palagi, nire-reprise, nire-replay, you are destroying your health. And that is your physical health, your mental health, emotional health, and overall, spiritual health. Ang lahat ng ito, ang pagtanggal ng mga bitterness and anger is best done through forgiveness. Hindi ka matatahimik sa buhay pag meron kang galit kasi hinding-hindi ka makakabawi. Hinding-hindi ka makakapaghiganti. The only way for you to have peace is to forgive. Patulad nung may pautang ka na hindi naman binabayaran nung may utang, inaaway ka pa, kinakalimutan naman niya, o gustuhin man niya magbayad, hindi niya kaya, para ka matahimik, you have to write that debt off. Gawin mo lang siyang bad account. Ilipat mo doon sa isang column ng accounting book mo. Bad debt. Charge it there and forget about it so you can move on. Maraming tao, sayang pag nawala sila sa buhay natin forever. Yes, may kasalanan sila sa atin. Yes, may nagawa silang mali. Yes, sinasaktan nila tayo. Pero hindi lang naman yun ang buong-buo nilang pagkatao. Meron din silang buting ginawa. May mabuti pa rin magagawa. Sayang na sayang naman ang relasyon natin sa kanila. Kung dahil lang sa isa, dalawa o tatlong galit, itatapon natin yung sampung mabuti sa kanila. Kaya napaka-restorative pa rin at pinakamabuti pa rin na paraan to conserve is to forgive. You must conserve your relationships. You must preserve your very important relationships ang tagal binuo tapos isang pagkakamali sisirain mo lahat may isang itatapon kang mali pero mayroon kang sampung tama na itatapon kasama nun that's not wise so the very spiritual the very godly forgive and if you're not spiritual or godly the intelligent forgive at least be wise about it forgiveness puts the act the thought, the idea, the issue of sin, away. Mahalaga ng environment natin, hindi toxic. Kaya nga naglalagay pa tayo ng mga essential oil sa mga amoy-amoy sa room, inaamoy-amoy natin sa ating balat, bililinis sa atin ng environment, tinatanggalan natin ng mga pests para ang environment. Pleasant, nice, helpful. Pero pag laging galit, Laging kasalanan ang laman ng iyong utak. Toxic ang environment. Psalm 103 verse 12. How far the Lord has taken our sins from us? Farther than the distance from east to west. Gano daw kalayo din nala ng Panginoon ang mga kasalanan natin para malayo sa atin? kung gano'ng kalayo ang silangan sa kanluran, which is a metaphor for super layo. Ang gusto ng Diyos, mawala yung isyo ng kasalanan sa ating buhay. Hindi yung mawala ang ating mga pagkukulang at maging perfect tayo. Hindi yun ang ibig sabihin nun kasi unachievable yon this side of eternity. Impossible. Kaya nga may provision for continuous confession, may con- for restoration, kasi alam ng Diyos, God remembers that we are dust. So pag sinabing God takes our sin away from us as far as the east is from the west, it doesn't mean that God makes us sinless. Impossible. At pag yan ang ginawa mong demand sa iyong sarili, you will be very strict on yourself and on others, and you will live in hell. Ang kahulugan, nililimot ng Diyos yung mga kasalanan para huwag nalang pag-usapan, huwag nalang lagi yun ang topic, dahil marami pang ibang topic sa mundo. But many religious people are sin-obsessed. This is Moses-ness. Yung laging may batas na nabibreak, laging mayroong mga regulation na nabibreak. So ang laging pinag-uusapan, you are a lawbreaker, you are a sinner, at laging batuhan ang batuhan, husgahan ang husgahan, it puts walls between peoples, not bridges. 
And it was a wall between you and God, not a bridge. So sabi, inilayo na para hindi lagyan ng topic. Hebrews 8, 12, I will treat them with kindness. Even though they are wicked, I will forget their sins. Nakita nyo? Sabi ng Diyos, even though they are wicked, tinatanggap tayo ng Diyos. Alam ko, magkukulang ka pa rin, magkakasala ka pa rin. I remember that you are dust, but I will forget all of that. I will forgive you para ma-restore ang relationship natin. Kasi kung hindi ko kayo i-forgive, guilty kayong lahat, magkakagalit tayo. That's why forgiveness is very important. And this is Jesusness. Yung lagi natin ina-emphasize Moses-ness or Jesusness. Moses-ness is the law. And the law means you are a lawbreaker all the time. It means that you're always guilty. It means magkagalit kayo ng Diyos. It, it also means kagalit mo lahat ang kapwa mo believer na lawbreaker. But Jesusness is what Hebrews 8.12 is saying. Yes, I know, sinful kayo. Yes, I know, magkukulang kayo. Yes, I know. I will just forget that. Para maganda ang relasyon natin. Hindi ba natin kayang gawin yan sa ating mga pamilya? Sa ating mga kaibigan? Yes, I know, nagkasala ka sa akin. Yes, I know, magkakasala ka pa rin. Pero hindi ka naman complete 100% kasalanan eh. Marami ka rin kabutihan. Marami ka rin kagandahang loob. I will forget your sins. I will focus on the goodness of God that still lives in you para magkaroon tayo ng magandang relasyon, para hindi toxic ang relationship, para matahimik ang buhay. Pero kung lagi kong isusulat, kukwentahin, sisingilin ka sa mga kasalanan, at ganun din ang gagawin mo sa akin, ganun ang gagawin natin sa isa't isa, imperno ang buhay. That's why Jesus saves us from all that. Spirituality should focus on forgiveness, not on accusation and judgment. And yet, many religious congregations are always focused on accusation and judgment. Yung papagka nagkasala ka, naispayan ka ng mga kapwa mo member, isusumbong ka kung kaninong high council of righteous people. Tapos nilitisin ka, i-judge ka, pupublikuhin ka, at ititiwalag ka. Ba't ka pa sumali? Huwag ka nagsasali kasi alam mong kahit kailan, magkakasala ka pa rin, magkukulang ka. Lahat nagkakasala, lahat nagkukulang. Kaya sabi ng Diyos, kakalimutan ko na lang para tahimik ang buhay natin. Tapos tayo, ungkatan ng ungkatan, Moses ness yun. Matthew 18, 21-22 Peter came up to the Lord and asked, How many times should I forgive someone who does something wrong from, to me? Is it seven times? Is seven times enough? You know, their tradition requires them to forgive three times. Kaya si Pedro naman, parang impressed na impressed na siya sa kabaitan niya, Sabi niya, three times two is six, plus one, seven. Sobra, sobra na. Will I forgive seven times? And Peter was expecting to be Lord, wow, ang bait mo. Jesus answered, not just seven times, but 77 times, which is really a metaphor for endless. Huwag kang tumigil ang pagpapatawad. Bakit? Oras na tumigil ka, magkakagalit na uli kayo kasi bukas may kulang na naman yan eh. Hindi naman pwedeng wala Ang sekreto ng nagkatagal na samahan ay hindi dahil perfect kayo, kundi dahil nagpapatawaran kayo sa inyo inyong mga imperfections. Lalo sa mag-asawa. Siyempre, pinakasalan mo na yan. As is, where is. Yan na yan. No return, no exchange. So, ang perfect yan mo is pagpapatawad, hindi pagsumbat. Hindi pagkukwenta at pagtutuo sa mga pagkukulang, kundi pagbura. Para tahimik kayo. Eh, ang dami na po niyang kasalanan. At di sige, huwag kang magpatawad, but go to hell. Bakit po? Eh, kasi hindi ka rin papatawarin ng Diyos. Mahirap ba may tigyan yan? Na nagpapatawad ka dahil makadyos ka at hindi ka talaga mabait, magpatawad ka dahil lang matalino ka. Kasi pag hindi ka nagpatawad, you burn the bridge over which you too must pass. To enjoy salvation, just keep on forgiving others and even yourself. Marami ako mga Facebook pamangkin. Ang dami-daming PM sa akin. Araw-araw guilty sila. Araw-araw ang lungkot-lungkot nila. Araw-araw gusto nilang nila halos magbigte kasi kulang at kulang ang kabanalan nila. Nakakalimutan nila. Sabi ng Diyos, I will forget your sins. Bakit ikaw? Remember ka pa na remember. You are making your life miserable. 
1 Corinthians 13, 5, Love keeps no record of wrongs. And God is love. And Jesus is the supreme expression of God's love. God keeps no record of your sins, of your wrongs, when you are already in the Lord. Jesus keeps no records of your sins and your wrongs. Ikaw lang ang lista ng lista, kaya ka miserable. At ikaw ang lista ng lista ng wrongs ng kapwa, kaya malupit ka sa Kanya. Godly love does not search for wrongs. Godly love does not focus on wrongs, but focus on love and forgiveness. To enjoy salvation, get out of the sin mode, the sin mentality. Halimbawa, yung Psalm 51.3. Kaya nga Old Testament yan eh. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Alam mo naman siyempre kung may kasalanan ka. At kung religyoso ka, sensitive, lagi mong dinaramdam yun. My sin is always before me. Kinukot niya ako, sinusumbatan, minamaliit, pinapagilti. Pero dapat nun yun. Hindi na dapat ganyan after Jesus. Because God forgets your sins. God takes your sin away as far as the east is from the west. Pastor, di po ba delikadong ituro yan? Baka may mag-abuso. Eh, yan yung sinasabi ng Bible. Alam mo, gusto mag-invento pa ako na ibang sasabihin. Kung nadedelikaduhan ka, bahala ka sa buhay mo. Pero yan ang dapat ituro kasi yan ang nakasulat. You don't have to be overprotective of people and not to teach the truth para lang pigilin sila na baka umabuso. Problema nila pag umabuso sila. But true believers will not abuse, will only appreciate the kindness of God. They will do their best to be their most righteous selves, but in cases they fall, God remembers that they are dust, and so too, they should. And seek the Lord's continuing renewal and cleansing, then move on. Yung my sin is always before me, that's Moses-ness. But God forgets your sins to restore your relationship, that is Jesus-ness. Kaya may Old Testament, Old Covenant, at merong New Testament, New Covenant, New Agreement with God, a new command, a new law. Pagpatuloy ka pang nag-swimming, nagbabad, nagtampisaw sa Moses-ness, para namang walang Jesus na nangyari, sinasayang mo ang sakripisyon ni Jesus para makalimutan na ng Diyos ang kasalanan mo, hinugasan ng dugo ni Jesus, tapos ikaw ungkat ng ungkat, eh di binabali, wala mo ang kamatayan ni Jesus. Appreciate what it means to be forgiven and cleansed. 1 John 1, 5-7 is a very, very powerful idea which is most misunderstood. Jesus told us that God is light and doesn't have any darkness in Him. Now I am telling you. Okay? Ito yung premise. God is light. Walang darkness sa Kanya. Yun yung premise. Out of that, let us develop the idea. Sabi now I'm telling you. If we say we, have, we share in life with God and keep on living in the dark, and living in the dark here doesn't mean continuously sinning, but treating ourselves as criminals and then hide in the dark in spite of the fact that we are already God's children and we say we share in the life with God but we do not live as if we are in the light but we hide, we criminalize ourselves we are lying and not living by the truth and what is the truth? the truth is God already cleansed you through Jesus and God already forgot your sins now, if you say that you are a child of God, that you live in the light, and God is light, don't live in darkness. It doesn't mean don't live in secret sin, but it means don't live as if you were a criminal that you have to hide. Accept yourself as God accepts you. Love others as God loves them. And then out with your life as you are. You don't have to flaunt and display all your imperfections but kasama sa dilion that you are imperfect, but 
the love of God makes you perfect through the sacrifice of Jesus for you. Live with that. Para kamatahimik. Verse 7, But if we live in the light, which means if we accept our reality and not criminalize and hide our true selves, if we share in life with God, if we live like God, meaning, meaning there's no darkness in Him, therefore there's also no darkness in us, though we know that internally meron, pero tinatanggal lang ngayon ng Diyos, that God looks at you and sees the blood of Jesus, not your sin. If we live in that light, as God does, we share in life with each other, not in death. It means pare-pareho lang naman tayo eh. Mga pagkukulang, may pare-pareho pa rin tayong mga imperfection, pero pare-pareho tayong pinatawad, pare-pareho tayong nilinis. So we live and share this life with each other. What we share with each other is life, not death. What we share with each other is love, not hatred. What we share with each other is peace, not war. And the blood of His Son, Jesus, washes all our sins away. Gano'n naman kahirap basahin itong simpleng verse na ito? Pag sinasabi mo, nananalig ka na anak ka ng Diyos, eh ang Diyos ay liwanag, walang kadiliman sa Kanya, eh anak ka niya, therefore, wala rin kadiliman sa iyo, puro ka lang liwanag. Eh paano po yung mga talaga kadiliman ko? Di ba, nilimot lang na, inugasan na nga. Ba't ikaw ungkat na ungkat? Pagka natutunan mong ibig sabihin yan, you will go out in the light, live your life in the light, not in secret, not in darkness, and everybody else will do that, and you will love and accept each other, and you will share life, not death. You will share peace and joy, not trouble. Therefore, love will reign supreme in your fellowship. John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Akala ng iba, yung will never walk in darkness means will never sin. Impossible yun. Hindi yun ang ibig sabihin yan. Kasi kung ang ibig sabihin yan, you will not sin, but may provision. But if we sin, we can confess our sins, blah, blah, blah. Ang ibig sabihin ng you will never walk in the dark is not you will never sin. But it is, as far as God is concerned, you have already been cleansed. It's an internal arrangement between you and God. Sasabihin ni Satan sa'yo, may kasalanan ka, may kasalanan ka, titingin ka sa Diyos, meron po ba? Di ba may arrangement na tayo? Wala, wala ko nakikita dahil nililis ka na. Sasabihin ni Satan, meron, meron, meron. Sabi ni Lord, wala ko nakikita. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng pagmamahal ng Diyos through Jesus. So kanino ka ba nakikinig? Kay Satan o sa Diyos? Pag kay Satan ka nakinig, talagang lagi kang guilty, lagi kang masama at gaganon din ang gagawin mo sa kapwa mo. Kaya pa yung kapwa mo, pag lagi mong sila, yung kasalanan ka, huwag kulang ka, no? nakipag-usap ka na naman kay Satan, ano? Dati ka makipag-usap sa Diyos, who forgets our sins, who cleanses us, and loves us in spite of the little truths in our internal lives. All of that is cleansed by the light. Alam niyo ba yung light, katulad ng autoclave sa mga hospital, sa mga clinic, you know that white light cleanses. Kahit ang matatanda natin, nagbibilad ng mga plato sa mga banggerahan nung araw na nakaharap sa silangan kasi naniniwala sila, pag tinamaan ng araw yung mga plato, lumilinis. And true, merong disinfecting quality ang light. E si Jesus is light. Tinatamaan ka ni Jesus, talsik ang mga kasalanan mo. You walk in the light, not because you are really light, but because of the light of Jesus that shines on you and covers you and disinfects you. Walking in the light doesn't mean walking with no mistakes. It means you'll always be forgiven and cleansed because Jesus paid for all that. People who are forgiven are washed by the blood of Jesus. Kaya pag inaakusa mo ang kapwa mo sa mga patuloy niyang kahinaan, mga pagkakamali, minamalit mo yung dugo ni Jesus na nakatakip, nakahugas sa kanyang kasalanan. Nung si Adan at si Eva nagkasala, ang unang ginawa ng Diyos, binihisan sila ng mga balat ng hayop kasi hubad sila at narealize silang hubad sila. So nagkaroon sila ng feeling of nakedness, of incompleteness, of shame. So God covered them with animal skins. But you know what it takes to have animal skins? You have to kill an animal to get the skin. 
Hindi naman skinless lang guning sa iyong mga animals. Siyempre, pagka tinanggal mo yung skin, they will die. Which really means, God covered Adam and Eve with blood. Because it takes blood to take that skin away from an animal. And that blood looked forward to the blood of Jesus. That from the first couple that walked the face of the earth, there was already a provision for cleansing and forgiveness through the blood of the Son of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So in the beginning, naroon na rin si Jesus, and the Word became flesh, and dwelt among men whose blood was sacrificed in a real sense for all the symbolic sacrifices that happened before done in the name of the true sacrifice that will yet happen when Jesus becomes manifest in the flesh. Laging covered ka ng blood. Laging may nagbabayad. Sa Israel lang nga lang doon, ang pinagbabayad nila mga hayop. So, kaya ng hayop, ano ginawa ko sa mundo? Bakit ako kailangan masacrifice sa kasalanan nila? Kaya kinumpleto ni Jesus yun, by one single sacrifice, God through Jesus has completed and perfected for all time all the sacrifices needed for the cleansing of sin. 1 Corinthians 6 11, But you were washed clean. Past tense na, ha? You were made holy. Past tense na rin. And you were made right with God. Past tense. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Tapos na. You know, God is timeless. Alam nyo ba ang Diyos, wala siyang past tense, walang future tense, lahat present. Because God is. Sabi niya kay Moses, I am. Hindi I was, hindi I will be. I am. But the work of cleansing us is already done. Tapos na. Kahit sa mga gagagawin mo pa bukas, next week, next year, tapos na. One single sacrifice. People are forgiven, are washed, and bathed in God's light. 1 Thessalonians 5.5 5, You are all people who belong to the light. You belong to the day. We don't belong to the night or to darkness. So don't hide in fear. Come out in the light. And the light of Jesus cleanses you. What God sees is the light of Jesus, not your own personal darkness. So what we should see in others, in our brothers and sisters, is also the light of Jesus that covers them. Huwag tayo maging accusers, because accusing is the work of the devil. Justification, acceptance and love, is the work of Jesus. Do not criminalize yourself and others, because God doesn't. Of course, this does not mean that we are already morally perfect because this is impossible. This means that we are looked upon, treated by God as light, not as dark. The darkness of and in people who are forgiven is turned into light. This is the miracle of the cross and the resurrection. God's people no longer have darkness. We are now people of the light. In spite of our daily realities that our accusing spirit will always say darkness, darkness, darkness. God says, I see light because I brought your sin as far as the east is from the west and I forgot all about them. God's people who hide as if they belong to the dark, as if God did not cleanse them, are not living by the truth, are not living by the truth of Jesusness. But they are living by Moses-ness. Kaya miserable. Forgiveness puts the oppressive, sacrificial religious system out of business. Nung si Jesus ay pumasok sa Jerusalem, and many scholars believe that that was the first time after he was dedicated when he was 12 or he was accepted as a mature man. Lahat excited, dumadating na ang Son of God, dumadating na ang Messiah, dumadating na ang Savior. Ano kaya ang gagawin niya? Sinalubong siya ng mga tao, ng mga dahon, ng mga damit na inilatag nila sa kalsada. Inaabangan nila ako anong gagawin ni Jesus kasi pinakamahalagang act, gagawin niya nung araw na yon. At anong ginawa ni Jesus? Tumuloy siya sa templo, 
which was the most sensible place to go to. It was the highest spot in the city. It was the most revered, most important to the people. Pero pagdating niya doon, hindi siya nag-offering. Ang ginawa niya, itinaboy niya ang lahat ng kagkitinda ng mga hayop na ino-offer. Ipinagtataob niya ang mga money-changing tables sa mga bumibili ng mga animals for offering. At tapos, umalis na siya. Sabi ng mga tao, yun lang. Alam niyo talaga ang ginawa ni Jesus nung pumasok siya doon? Symbolically, winakasan niya ang sacrifice. Kasi ang itinaob niya, mga money changers, ng bilihan ng animals for sacrifices, ipinagtataboy niya ang nagtitinda ng mga hayop for sacrifices, tinapos na Jesus ang sacrificial system in the temple. Kasi, siya na ang i-offer once for all. At ang mga hayop naman na ino-offer ay hindi nakakapaglinis ng kasalanan. Sayang lang ang pinibid pagbili ng mga tao. Sayang lang ang pagod nila. Walang na-achieve. Tulad ng maraming religious activity today, sayang. Walang na-achieve. Hindi naman sila nagiging peaceful. Hindi naman sila nagiging loving. Sayang ang reliyon. Hebrews 10, 14. For by one sacrifice, He has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. Ang ganda ng mga tenses dito, kung mahilig kayo sa grammar. By one sacrifice of Himself, Jesus already finished, made perfect forever, those who are being made holy. So, legally speaking, God already declared you, declared you perfect forever, although on a daily basis, you are still being made holy. God is not yet finished working on you. You are a work in progress. But at any given time, when heaven looks at you, heaven looks at a finished work. So, dalawang dimension. What heaven sees is a perfect being, and what you see every day is one that is being made holy, continuously, developmentally, on practical terms. But at any time, heaven sees the perfect being, and any time you die, it is the perfect being that will enter heaven. Dalawang uri ng dimensions. Kung saan ka titingin, will determine kung sasaya ka o lulungkot. Isaiah 53.5 By His wounds, we are healed. Healed na, past tense na. 1 John 1.7 The blood of Jesus purifies us from all sin. This makes the sacrificial system, the religious enterprise in Jerusalem, obsolete. Wala nang kailangan for the sacrifices in the temple, therefore, wala nang kailangan for the temple itself. Hebrews 10, 11, The priests do their work each day, and they keep on offering sacrifices that can never take away sins. And for 2,000 years, many priests work this every day. They make bloodless sacrifices for the forgiveness of sins. But the Bible says, even if they offered blood, it doesn't take away sin. What more if it's bloodless? Hebrews 10, 18, When sins are forgiven, there is no more need to offer sacrifices. And through the blood of Jesus, sins are already forgiven. There is no more need to offer sacrifices. Kaya nung namatay si Jesus, Matthew 27, 51, at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two. From top to bottom. May makapal na kortina na naghihiwalay from the most holy place to the holy place. May mga grade pa ng holy na siya mga lugar nila eh. Yung sa labas, pwede Gentiles. Pero pagpasok mo, Jews lang. Pagpasok mo, holy place, yun lang mga qualified. At yung most holy place, only the high priest can enter there once a year to make offering. He brings blood to make an offering for the nation. Pagkatanggap-tanggap sa Diyos, sabi nila, yung offering, makakalabas siya ng buhay. Pero pag hindi, siya man mamamatay, lalo kung siya may kasalanan. So pagpasok niya sa kortina na yon, may tali sa paa niya na nakakabit na yung dulo hawak-hawak ng mga naiwan sa labas. Kasi may mga suot siyang mga maliliit na mga kampana. Kasi pag nagalit ang Diyos dahil siya man mismo ba kasalanan, mamamatay siya bigla, according to their belief, 
tutumba siya at magkakalimbangan yung malilit na bells, malalaman ng mga tao sa labas, ay namatay. Hilahin na ang tali para mahila mo yung bangkay palabas kasi hindi sila pwedeng pumasok. You see, only one, the high priest, can enter the presence of God. Anong ginawa ni Jesus? Ano? Curtain, curtain! Anong high priest, high priest? Pinilas ang kurtina mula top to bottom. Ibig sabihin, wala nang kurti-kurtina. Everybody can enter the presence of God through Jesus. Heaven was democratized. Heaven was made available to all. You don't have to pass through a priest or anybody to go to God. That's what Jesus accomplished. John 2.19, Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, meaning the stone temple, and I will raise it again in three days. Meaning, His body. Sabi niya, alam niyo itong templong bato na ito, wala yung saisay. Guhuin na yan. At sa tatlong araw, itatayo ko muli. Nilibak-libak siya ng mga tao kasi hindi na naintindihan that the temple that will be raised in place of the stone one was Jesus Himself. And, by extension, all believers, because our body is now the temple of the Holy Spirit. Na-democratize. Hindi mo kailangan mag-pilgrimage sa Jerusalem para lumapit sa Diyos. Dala-dala mo ang Espiritu ng Diyos sa iyong puso everywhere you go. Dumami yung mga temples, kumalat sa buong mundo, and the earth became the kingdom of God instead of a limited territory claimed by the Jews for themselves. Matthew 24.2 Jesus replied, Do you see these buildings? Especially the temple. They will certainly be torn down. Not one stone will be left in place. Yeah. Bugo in lacha. Hindi yung templo yan ang mahalaga. Ang mahalaga ikaw gagawin kang templo ng Dios. Oras na manalig ka kay Jesus. So there is no more need for branded, franchised, incorporated religion which is the exclusive dispenser of forgiveness. Walang ganon. Walang religion, walang church na siya lang ang kausap ng Diyos at sa pamamagitan ka lang niya makakapasok sa langit. Marketing lang nila yun. Pero walang ganon. At ano ang relihiyon na tunay na katanggap-tanggap sa Diyos? Yung iba, ano pong relihiyon na sasalihan ko para matuwa ang Diyos sa akin? Eh, nagtatalo-talo yung mga relihiyon, nag-aaway-aaway. Kanino ba ako maniniwala? James 1.27 Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this. To look after orphans and widows in their distress. Which means, you want true religion? Be kind to the needy and the weak. And you are in the right religion. Some yah and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world, which in the context means being polluted by unkindness. E and dami dami pag join nila na isang religion, lalo sila nagiging unkind, lalo nagiging pintasera, lagi nagiging judge sang iba, lagi magagalite, nakikipagawa sa mga ibang religion. They are polluted by the world by the unkindness of religion. Sabi ng ng James. Gusto mo maging tunay na relihiyoso, yung katanggap-tanggap sa Diyos na style? Huwag yung mabait ka. Eh, paano pa yung religion namin? Eh, babait ka ba? Kapapabait ka ba? Eh, di yun. Okay. Eh, tinuturo po sa amin, kami lang ang tama, lahat po pata sa hindi, awayin namin lahat mga tao. Eh, di, alam mo na yung bunga. Mag-isip ka dyan. Because God our Father accepts the religion that is pure and faultless. And that religion is a religion of love. Of kindness, especially to the weak and the needy. There's no need for elaborate and oppressive religious regulations and rituals and controls. Ang ending lang ito. Anong talab sa yon ng religion mo? Bumabait ka ba? Yun lang. Hindi ng memorya mo ang isang buong version ng Bible. Tapos yung ibang version masama na sa yon. Hindi yung sumali ka sa lahat ng activity na isuot mo lahat ng costume. Napuntahan mo lahat ang pilgrimage places. Hindi yon Ang tanong, bumabait ka ba? Hmm. 
nagigit ka bang mahabagin, maawain, to the point of helping people. Yan ang reliyon, nakatanggap-tanggap sa Diyos. Walang brand nakikita sa gawa. The content of Psalm 51 was modified, perfected by the blood of Jesus. And let's look at it. Psalm 51, again, Old Testament idea to, ha? Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Anong sagot ni Jesus dyan? Done. Ginawa na yan ni Jesus. Verse 3, For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Ang sagot ni Jesus, done with. Tama na yung issue na yan. Binayaran ko na, kinalimutan na ng ama, inilayo na as far as the east is from the west. Old Testament mode ang thinking mo, anak. Move on. Level up. Cleanse me with his soap, sabi niya. And I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Sabi ng Diyos to Jesus, done. You are becoming very boring, anak. Done na. Verse 10, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Sabi ni Jesus, done. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Done. Kaya nga Old Testament, eh, meron ng New Testament. Eh. Kaya nga Old Covenant, meron ng New Covenant. Nasaan ka? Nasa Old Covenant, New. Nasa Moses Ness ka ba o nasa Jesus Ness? Ito mga prayer na to prayer bago nangyari ang pag-sacrifice ni Jesus. Prayer bago tinanggap si Jesus. Pero pagkatapos doon, irrelevant na rin yun. Conscious ka na lang dapat na lagi mong ayusin ang sarili mo in practical terms, in real daily terms. But as far as eternal values are concerned, as far as eternal judgment of God is concerned, you have already been made clean. Hindi ka na mawawalay sa Diyos. Napakalaking away na mga, even ng mga Bible-based Christians kung natatanggal o nawawala ang salvation. Romans 8, 35, 38-39 Can anything separate us from Christ's love? I am sure that nothing can separate us from God's love. Not death, life, angels, or ruling spirits. I am sure that nothing now Nothing in the future, no powers, nothing above us or nothing below us, nothing in the whole created world will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that God has shown us in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing na nga eh. Tapos lagi mo pang iniisip. Yung Psalm 51, balikan natin, yung in-update na ni Jesus, Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Sabi ni Jesus, done. John 8, 36. So if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. Freedom, done. Eh, bakit nagbe-behave ka rin as if a prisoner? Bakit para ka pa rin lagi nakatali, nakakulong, at wala kang ginawa ko, di itali, di kulong ang kapwa. So to stay in heaven, to stay in that heavenly realm, in that heavenly feeling, don't complicate yourselves and your lives. Just keep on forgiving. Nanjan ang ligaya ng buhay. Just keep on forgiving. Jesus had several game-changing teachings on salvation, on the way of, to God, on the way to God's kingdom. So understand Jesus' teachings on salvation by forgiveness. At marami pa yan. Isa lang ibig sabihin, merong for salvation by kindness, which will be our topic. Nama yan, second service. Merong salvation by giving, tulad ng ginawa ni Jairus. So teach, promote, practice, and enjoy salvation by forgiveness. Salvation by faith. 
Sasabihin ng iba, paano po yung salvation by faith? Yung pala, works yung forgiveness. Because if you truly have faith, you will have works. Salvation by faith in Jesus is salvation by faith in Jesusness. Which means salvation by faith realized, materialized, accomplished, and shown by practical Jesusness. Sinasabi mo, you have faith in Jesus? Nasaan yung Jesusness mo? May faith ka in Jesus? Faith saves? Pero ang practice mo sa buhay, Mosesness? Eh di kay Moses ka talaga may faith, hindi kay Jesus. Salvation by faith, James 2.17 Faith, if it has no works, or no works of Jesusness, is dead. Faith means practical works. Faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. So pag sinasabi mong salvation by faith, bakit parang salvation by works? Because faith may kakambal na work. If you really believe in Jesus, therefore you will believe in Jesusness, you will do things and works in the concept, in the idea of Jesusness. Hindi sapat maniwala ka, I'm saved by faith, tapos ang lupit-lupit mo, hindi ka nagpapatawad. May faith ka, pero kanino? Kasi kung yung faith na yun kay Jesus, therefore maniniwala ka sa teaching ni Jesus, i-implement mo sa buhay at teaching ni Jesus, yung faith mo will translate into works. Works of love, works of forgiveness. Related yun. So yung ganun lang, forgive lang, Heaven, na, Huwag mong langin. Salvation is free, but it is not cheap. Because Jesus paid for it. Jesus did all the work, kaya dumali sa'yo. Pero hindi madali yung work itself. Pinadali lang niya para kapag pahingahin. Yun ang love of God. Matthew 11, 28 to 30, sabi ni Jesus, Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Dapat yung inuungkat ko yung Matthew 11, 28 to 30, hindi ko nasabihin ng laman, automatic na, dahil, Paulit-ulit tayo sa verse na ito eh. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, sabi ni Jesus, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Paano mo malalaman kung makahesos ang teaching, makahesos ang lifestyle? Restful para sa kaluluwa, sa espiritu, sa emosyon. Kahit pagod ang spirito mo, pahinga. Eh, kahit pagod ang katawan mo, nakapahinga ang iyong spirito. Alam mo, kahesos yun. Pero kung hindi nagpapahinga yung spirito mo, lalo kang guilty, lagi kang natatakot, hindi yan galing kay Jesus. Kasi sabi ni Jesus, fear not, I have overcome the world. Those who understand love, those who live in love, will not fear. In verse 13 of Matthew 11, For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. That is what Jesus wants for you. Easy and light yoke or burden. Siya ang gumawa ng mahirap na part. Ang natira na lang na dapat ikaw lang ang gumawa, forgive. God cannot forgive others for you. You have to do that yourself. And you have to forgive yourself to receive the full measure of God's forgiveness. Forgive and you get forgiven. Forgive and you receive the kingdom. And this is the challenge. I want you to bow before the Lord. If it helps you focus, close your eyes and think of all the people that you have really not forgiven up to now. And do not rise from the chair until you have settled this matter and you have forgiven. Let's be alone with the Lord for now. Difficult or not difficult, think of people you really are angry with, you have an issue with, and decide to forgive now. Right now, in silence, let's do that together. You may not be able to remember one by one, but you can also have a very big, one-time, big-time forgiveness that you will give to people. Kahit later nyo na maalala kung sino sila, patawarin nyo na ngayon. Kasi yan ang bara para kayo patawarin ng Diyos. Para kayo magkaroon ng kapayapaan, katahimikan, at tumanggap na marami mga pagpapala. Tama na mga drama-drama na nakaraan, you have to leave that behind so that you can move on. And those of you who are deciding to forgive, Though you might remember the specific names later on, I want you to stand up where you are and declare to the Lord that yes, at this point, you are forgiving those that have wronged you or those that you think have wronged you. 
Stand up now. Make that offering to the Lord to forgive. I want you to walk out of this hall cleansed, forgiven, because you have forgiven others. And as you are standing, as much as you can remember now, although it need not be complete, whisper into God's ears the names of the people that you are forgiving right now and let God lift that burden from your heart Father thank you for the opportunity to review our hearts and to search for an unforgiving spirit and to be cleansed from it right now. Father, as your people stand before you and declare forgiveness to others, we believe in your promise that you too will forgive each one of us. We receive that continuing forgiveness. We receive that ever-increasing measure of your love and blessing. And Lord, I ask you to bless your people standing here today. Give them to them now all the blessings that have been withheld just because we have been unforgiving. Open the doors of heaven. Open the floodgates of heaven. And pour out on these children of yours blessings that you would have loved to give them long ago but can give them only now that they have really forgiven. People of God, receive this blessing. And more importantly, receive the peace, receive the love, receive the quiet spirit, receive a helpful environment for your spiritual growth. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus, by whose blood you forgive us. Praise God. Thank God. Palakpakan na Panginoon.